What's going on guys, Philip Petrae, Genius. All right, we're gonna do a Bitcoin update. Take a look at the daily chart in relation to our current consolidation formation. We'll take a look at our internals because I wanna see uh, this change here. We'll talk about that. Uh, this is our heat map. Basically, we're in sell the rip mode. We'll talk about what the delta readings are telling us. Uh, our meme chart, see how that's progressing pr to uh, previous price action. Crypto fear and greed, we'll take a look at this reading here. Uh, our Bitcoin dominance chart, uh, talk about how that's going to be affecting the alts here. Our GBTC premium chart, our VWAP chart, our GAP chart. And last but not least, I want to show you guys something new. It's the bid ask spread. We'll talk about what this means for bottoms and tops on Bitcoin. All right, guys, let's dive into this video and check it out. Trade genius. All right, guys, so on the daily, I'm just going to go over the daily because essentially all the other time frames are just going to show us consolidation. And, you know, basically we're heading toward this area of support. Again, this shaded bar area, there's a shaded area here. Uh, that's weekly support. And that goes back um, way back over here, uh, April 2018. On the weekly chart, that, that bar there was kind of a last stand before rolling over. So usually those, those spots will give us um, support down the line, which is what's been happening here. We've essentially, every time we've dipped down into that level, uh, we've had buyers come in and we really have not seen a daily close below that level. So it uh, looks like we're going to be heading toward this area again. Now, coming down to this level, everything's going to get really bearish. I will be interested to see what the crypto fear and greed index reads when we get down here because I think a lot of people are going to say that's just one too many touches and we're going to break down and go lower, possibly filling that gap uh, close that uh, 8505 area. And we'll look at that chart as well later. But, uh, you know, that's where a lot of times you'll see things shift. And then, you know, like, for example, the BitMEX funding will go short. And actually, that's going to be a bullish thing. So, uh, you know, keep an eye on this level as we head down. As far as, you know, this week, price action wise, as you'll see, we're kind of in the short mode. So until uh, price action proves otherwise, and we'll talk about that, especially on the VWAP chart, the levels to look for. Uh, we're going to be looking for um, basically lower prices. And ideally, if we get down to this uh, $95, $9,600 level, I'd be looking to take a, a good risk reward long position at that point. This is our internal chart. And this graph here is the BitMEX funding. So this means that majority are positioned long. What I don't like about this, especially when we get into these uh, consolidation type environments, is that a lot of times what will happen is ultimately this positioning gets wrong footed. So you can see here uh, during this price action here, everyone was long and actually the price started to drift up. But then you have a, you know, a BART type move down, which gets all these guys to stop out and they're no longer really long and the funding goes flat or go short. Uh, because funding didn't really um, flip short here, I'm not really that bullish yet because as long as the funding is positive right now, I think there's still a risk for another one of these type moves down. So that would be one of the key things I'd look for is this funding to flip uh, to the short side down, like over here. And I think that would green light us to catch a bounce up into that upper trend line area up here, which currently is around uh, the 10,400 area. All right, flipping to the heat map. Right now we are in uh, pink shading. So that means you're basically wanting to sell the rips. So anytime you get a pop back above these moving averages, you would look to fade those. You already had one of those moves here. Well, this last spike up to a high of 10,297, which was shorted. Delta is coming down into a support and resistance line here at 60. And if that gives away the next area to look for a bounce would be at the 30 level for the Delta. So this is telling us expect more downside. And if we do get a decent move down to 9,400, I would keep an eye on this 30 level. If that does not hold and we get a dip down to the zero level, those historically are very good levels to be buying dips on like we saw here and here, which is this area. And in this area, those sub-zero readings are a really, really good spot to go long. All right, this is our meme chart. So this basically is looking at previous price action. This is on a four-day chart versus current price action down here, which is a two-day chart. So it's like a two to four-day ratio. And the reason for that is things are speeding up in the current cycle. 
So I've overlaid price action from this chart down here. And as you can see, we, we should expect consolidation and that's what we were entering into. And we said that would be par for the course as we get into uh, fourth quarter. So basically toward the end of the month is when we would expect to see if we're scaling properly, we'd see a big thrust up and uh, possibly see up towards the uh, $18,000 mark on a very sharp move. Okay, so very typical for Bitcoin, lull everybody to sleep and then just come out of nowhere with a big move. A lot of people will be expecting this bottom or this support to give way all of the support level here at 6,000, right? I, I Just because of the, where we are in time in the halving cycle, I really am not leaning toward this scenario playing out. Not impossible because this move has been abnormal in regards to previous halving cycle moves coming out of the bear market, been very, very strong. And even a pullback down to like the 8,000 level would not be bad. Technically speaking, you'd still have a bull move intact. But I suspect that so many people expecting this level to break down uh, and fill the gap uh, for example, uh, that it would not surprise me that this just holds and follows suit with the prior price action. Again, the way the reason why we look at these is because you know this is typical price action behavior, uh, psychological behavior, and a lot of times things repeat. And so we earmark and milepost the uh, critical price action levels, you know, tops of moves and, and things like that, and kind of help guide us through the current price action. So that's where these come in and are helpful to help predict potential price movements. All right, as far as the crypto fear and greed goes, nothing really actionable here, guys. Again, uh, at this point, anything above 90 would be a big time sell. I think these readings recently have been real muddy. Again, uh, anything south of 20, I would take a look at, but this reading of five, I just think was very abnormal for what we've seen in the past. Uh, that only took us to 10,000 and then subsequently lower readings took us to 20. So I don't know if that was just an oddball outlier, but we'll see how crypto fear and greed reacts uh, going forward. So just keeping an eye on that. If we get down to like that lower trend line, uh, let's say down here, and then we see crypto fear and greed do a typical move like what we see here with uh, readings below 20 down to 16. I would say that maybe things have synced back up and that is about what we would expect to see. But readings of five would be a, you know, we'd have to, you know, for that, you, normally you'd see a big time crash down. I mean, even when we broke through 6,000 uh, and things like that, you'd got a fear and greed index of nine. So very out, very strange reading on five, just, just going back to 10,000. Uh, on the dominance chart, so basically we said we're going to get a bounce in the alts. We were positioned on a couple of alt entries and so far that's been going up and uh, this rollover here on the technicals is what we were eyeballing. So if we start getting down to this level on the stochastics uh, for dominance, uh, that's been a real key tell to exit your alt position, swing positions if they haven't hit targets at that point and go back to looking for those uh, smaller time frame swing trades on alts, you know, using the 15 minute chart and the money maker. GBTC. So we like to look at GBTC because it premium oftentimes will, will show us what the market sentiment is. And 25 ha has been a very nice level to get long on Bitcoin dips. Uh, in this current bear market or bull market, but we also noted that on Friday the Van Eck uh, fund would be opening for institutional size investors, so they're going to do a fund similar to GBTC but better pricing. So you're not going to pay such a high premium, uh, and but you have to be an accredited or an institutional investor to access that that fund. So they're doing this before their ETF approval. Uh, using a loophole in the SEC rules to do so. So it's not technically a, an ETF, uh, but it is a fund like GBTC, but they're not going to be servicing a retail like GBTC. So GBTC, I'm, you know, you would have to assume that some of their higher net worth traders will be moving funds from GBTC because of the high premium over to the more efficiently priced Van Eck fund. Over time, the premium on GBTC will get in line with competing funds such as that Van Eck fund. And as you can see already, what's the level has dropped down to a low here of about 20% premium, which we really haven't seen in the bull market. Uh, typically this range below 25 is what we see at what we saw toward the end of the bear market. So I assume that we are probably going to establish a new range of premium for the time being. So we'll see how this reacts uh, as Bitcoin bottoms out and then uh, bounces. We'll get a new range here and, and 
give us a new indication of what's overbought and oversold. But ultimately, this is going to be a little bit more defining of the retail sentiment than the you know more professional type traders or, or trading positions. All right, this is the VWAP chart. So volume weighted price action, right? So where the most price action was via per volume. So last month that occurred at 10,670 approximately. We're below that level. And we're also below the developing current month VWAP, which currently is uh, here at approximately 10,370. So basically what I look for on this, guys, is when we close below it, that's usually a green light to look for more price action below the developing VWAP. So until we see a close back above this level of 10,380 or so, I'm going to be on the bearish side of things. And again, that kind of coincides with heading toward the bottom of this consolidation pattern as we saw on the daily chart. So VWAP chart says um, things look more bearish than bullish at the moment. Uh, here's our gap chart. And what I've done on the gap chart is also shown 50% levels between the gaps on the four hour chart, those typically uh, tend to have price reactions off of them. And currently we are reacting off of this 50%, which is from the two open gaps that we currently have and prices reacting off of that level currently at 10,170. Uh, so that's more of your short term trading stuff. But, you know, again, as we get down toward, um, you know, here's the futures um, triangle or pennant. And as we get toward the bottom of this, again, you're going to see bearish sentiment um, kick up. I think that's a good risk reward. You can have a tight stop and uh, let, let a little bottom form here, put your stop below that. And that's effective on either futures or the spot price of Bitcoin. But I think that's a good risk reward area. And look for another bounce up toward this trend line and then see where we are in the month. Uh, again, as we head toward that last week of the month in September, I'm expecting volatility to kick back up. Okay, the last one on this is the bid ask spread. So basically what this does is this takes an aggregate of all of the bid ask spread. So the how wide is the distance between the bid and the ask on the price ladder at the exchanges and kind of gives you an average. So when those when those readings get really low or really high, that oftentimes will give you a nice decent turning point in the market of Bitcoin. Now this one is um, kind of upside down. So basically if you have a low reading, like say below 0.2%, um, that's actually a sell indication, okay, if it's low. And if it's high, um, you know, north of 0.4 or 0.5, this is actually an indication to buy. So reading up here is a buy, uh, reading down here is a sell. And right now we're just kind of in the middle, nothing, nothing really actionable here. But again, the reasoning behind this is that your bid and ask spread uh, whether it's really far apart or really close together will give you an indication that you're probably at a market turning point. Uh, and, and again, this is something that you would see on uh, on a four hour chart that would be actionable top and a bottom. Okay, so good to keep an eye on the spread range when it gets to these levels of extreme. But right now, we don't see that currently uh, being actionable. So but we'll keep a tabs on this as we go forward. And if this does get actionable, we'll certainly let you guys know about it. All right, guys, well, that's it for this edition of the Bitcoin update. Again, looking short mode right now down to about this $95, $9,600 level. Uh, we should see a reaction in, uh, or a bounce around there. And uh, again, I think that's a good risk reward level this week if we can see some price movement down to that, that point. After that, we'll give you guys an update based on what we see there and take a look at the levels in play after that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you're interested in our moneymaker signals. Head over to tradelikeagenius.com and check out what we have over there. Thanks, guys. See you in the next video. Trade Genius.